Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 Star Trek Voyager Episode Soundtracks. So in this video I count down my top 10 soundtracks per episode uh, within Star Trek Voyager. So looking at the score, the musical score, for each episode of Voyager and counting down my top 10 favorites. So this is a part of a series where I have been counting down my top 10 favorite episode soundtracks for each Star Trek series. Have done Next Generation and Deep Space Nine so far. I am now up to Voyager. So first disclaimer is that uh, this video will not feature much of the music I'm going to be talking about as YouTube is quite sensitive about that sort of thing. So um, if you want to check out an extended version of this video where that may not be the case, you can check out a link in the description below that will take you to the, uh, the extended version, which will be on my Patreon page. You do not need to be a Patreon member in order to watch it. It should be available to the public. Uh, the link to that will be in the description below. So, as far as the music of Voyager goes, I think the same thing applies to what I said about Voyager as uh, D Space Nine, because I said that that music uh, wasn't quite as good as next generation and i think that's um definitely true here however voyager is very unique because and it's different than Deep space nine because my top 10 is dominated by dennis mccarthy dennis mccarthy pretty much has dominates all the good music in voyager in my opinion <laughs> whereas my d space nine one um, there was quite a few scores from David Bell and Jay Chataway that I liked as well that made my top 10. Now, those two same two composers were also composing music and for Voyager, which is different than Next Gen because Next Gen also had Ron Jones who quit after season four or during season four of Next Gen. Um, but I talked about there that I also, you know, Dennis McCarthy still did very well there as well because I love his score in Next Gen too. But um, in Voyager, I didn't really care. I found that I didn't care much. Um, and I gave them a shot. Like, I listened to the music, but I found I didn't care as much for Jay Chataway and David Bell's scores. And there was another composer, actually, he was unique to Voyager, just did a couple episodes, not very many. I can't remember his name, but I didn't care much for their music either. Um, the, without, like, looking or being biased or seeking out Dennis McCarthy, it just so happened that all the music that I was attracted to belonged to Dennis McCarthy. Now, Jay Chataway, a lot of his music, I do think, is kind of... It's good, but not great. It's kind of just more, you know, ordinary, I would say. And David Bell, I, I talked about David Bell's score in Deep Space Nine of being the Dominion War guy. Like, I associated him with, with Dominion War, and there are several episodes of the Dominion War, like Sacrifice of Angels and In the Pale Moonlight, where that worked really well for him. However, his scores in Voyager don't seem to work as well for me. They just seemed... First of all, they seemed to, to just imitate all of his other scores. Like, it doesn't seem like he has a unique sound. And, um... It seems more bland when applied to Voyager, um, that they're just repeating that the same sort of musical feel without really putting any oomph in it. And so, yeah, <laughs> and so you will find in this top 10 that I definitely favor Dennis McCarthy. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and jump into my list. I'll start with a few honorable mentions that didn't quite make my top 10. First honorable mention is Cold Fire, which had a very, uh, the composer, sorry, Cold Fire, the composer's Dennis McCarthy. Suspiria. It had a very sort of horror feel to it, like the music 
I think enhanced the horror aspects of the episode, particularly at the end when uh, Suspiria was attacking. I think that worked. Uh, next honorable mention is Memorial. The composer is David Bell. <laughs> This is the only entry for David Bell on this uh, in this video. Um, although I did kind of like his uh, score for Nemesis as well, but that didn't quite end up making my list. Uh, but Memorial, I think, worked well, even though the music was, again, kind of similar to what David Bell does every time. There were some variations on it, and it, and it kind of punctuated like the seriousness of the PTSD that was being expressed in this episode. And my final honorable mention is Eye of the Needle, and composer is Dennis McCarthy. McCarthy. This had the very soft, really subtle, but really soft music that really sort of enhanced or made clear the character like stories in this episode particularly that the the crew was lonely and missing their family and then at the end of course it really enhanced the fact that this romulan ended up being from the past and that they were screwed and i think that <coughs> the music in that episode was, was kind of lovely so now we'll get into my top 10 uh, favorite episode soundtracks of voyager and we'll start with my number 10 which is the raven from Dennis McCarthy, who is the composer. Um, yeah, so this, um, this music is really good, particularly in the, um, dream sequences. Now, this is definitely a case where the score is enhanced by the sound effects, because the sound effects combined with the music really put you in the the really mindset. In fact, it always brings chills uh, down my spine, like when these dream sequences come up. It really gets you in the mindset that this weird thing is happening, or that Seven of Nine is being called to. And at the end of the episode, when Seven of Nine finds her, the ship of her parents where she was assimilated as a little girl was very touching like they used a lot of like flute music and um that enhanced like seven sort of having flashbacks to being a young girl and being chased by the borg and the music really enhanced the tragedy of this moment and so this soundtrack always stuck out to me for that so next we'll get into my number nine which is scorpion of the composer is jay chataway So this is the only entry Jay Chataway has <laughs> in this list. So the rest is straight up Dennis McCarthy. Um, but I thought Jay Chataway did an exceptional job, probably the best job on Voyager in this and for Scorpion, which was you know one of my favorite episodes of uh, of the whole show. And I think the music worked for it, particularly the intense, scary music when the they show the Borg and the Borg cubes. I think that was very effective. Um, and the you know hype music in part two when we meet Seven of Nine, uh, and you know the musical cues they have when we see a uh, species 8472 so I, I think they all work well to enhance the suspense of this episode and also you get some nice sort of flute music as well in the tender moments like when Janeway is in sick bay injured and Chakotay went against her wishes and goes to apologize to her when she's unconscious like you get some nice soft music there as well but then the ending of evolution when the two work together you also get the powerful music of this team up so yeah this this the soundtrack for this episode always worked for me as well so next we'll move over to my number eight which is deadlock um the composer is dennis mccarthy <laughs> Now, 
Now, Deadlock is my second favorite Voyager episode. It's one of my favorite uh, episodes of the entire franchise. Um, I think it's an underrated episode because most people will disagree with me. But part, and this is something I've always remembered from way back when I was a teenager when I first saw this episode. Something that always stuck out to me. And always, that I, when I thought about this episode and I thought about how much I loved it, the one thing that always stuck in my mind was the music. Particularly the music that they played when the Vidians, which was such a badass scene, when the Vidians invaded one of the Voyagers and were going around killing everyone. Like the music, I remember that music from like 30, 25 years ago of being so distinctive and so powerful, and that really enhances like the horror of the moment of the, seeing, you know, Paris gunned down by the Deans and like they're talking about ripping out his organs and killing him and shit like that and the music like really made that like so much intense and really made it really emotional for but going back and watching the episode it also the music throughout the whole episode really works um with when we had the other version of Voyager that's getting damaged by the proton beams and Harry Kim flying into space and stuff like that it works very very well to to sell uh, the intensity of this episode. So next, um, we'll get to my number seven, which is Timeless, the composer's Dennis McCarthy. <laughs> Timeless, another one of my favorite Voyager episodes, and the music absolutely, it sells the epicness of it. Um, it really enhances the epic feel of it of a voyager trying to get home like the scene where they are celebrating their new slipstream drive and they break a bottle of champagne like the music really really sells that as like this epic celebration this great moment it really sells you that they're going home and then the music of course when voyager crashes on the planet and fails to go home it was equally as epic and really selling like the intensity of the moment when future version alternate um chakotay and harry kim are being chased by alternate laforge like that intensity of the music sold it as well like uh this is you know a one-shot deal um so yeah so i think the music really enhanced uh this episode as well so next We'll get into my number six, which is Resistance. She was so happy to get your letters. She wanted me to tell you something. It's another one of my favorite episodes. I think it's been underrated. Um, this, to me, was a very emotionally powerful episode. It deals with Janeway... Um, trying to rescue Tuvok and Balana for who are being tortured and held captive by a authoritarian um government when they were dealing with the rebel faction in order to get supplies and um she teams up with this old man who is delusional and thinks that Janeway's um his daughter but it turns out that he lost his daughter and his wife um, because he failed to act, uh, because he did an act of cowardice and, and wouldn't support them. And at the end, Janeway decides to say, I forgive you, father, and, and you know, and act like she's his daughter in order to give him uh, this last feeling of, of forgiveness right before he died. <laughs> it's such a powerful moment. And yes, the music sold it. The music was so gentle, was so sorrowful, and even, like, yeah, so that ending scene is definitely why this episode gets so high on my list. But through, even throughout the episode, it was selling, like, the direness and the dreariness. It really put across that tone of seriousness of how intense the situation was, but also how dreary it was. So, yeah, the score always stuck out to me for that reasons as well. So next, um, we'll get into my number five, um, which is the episode Drone. The composer is Dennis McCarthy. This is another one of my favorite episodes, and another episode I think has been underrated. Um, 
yeah, this is one of my favorites of the whole franchise. Um, but yeah, so the music throughout most of this is is good. It's passable, but not great. But it sells the intense of intenseness of the Borg and the wonderment of one becoming, you know, uh, an individual. But why this is number five on my list is mainly because of the ending scene, the music and the ending scene, which is the most powerful scene of the episode, when uh, Seven of Nine is uh, forced to watch her surrogate son die, where he sacrifices himself to save the crew. The music is so good. It really sells the moment. It really sells the the tragedy of the moment and it, it really gets you to sympathize with seven to feel what she is feeling in this moment i mean combined with the amazing performance by jerry ryan where after you know one dies that she just fumbles around sick bay not knowing what to do like the music is so good <laughs> it's like it has that, that flute music and even though this is just one scene it's just so good that i had to put it up to number five and not just that scene though the following scene where seven is looking at herself in the mirror and feeling all these emotions where none exist before and all the tragedy the music there is again beautiful they use the the classic flute music that dennis mccarthy is known for and really use it to good effect so next on my list is number four which is Gravity. Uh, the composer is Dennis McCarthy. Now, Gravity is not one of my favorite episodes. I think it's a decent, I think it's a good episode. Maybe it would make my top 25, maybe my top 20, but not my top 10. Certainly not one of my favorites of the whole franchise, but the music always stuck out to me. The music is part of the reason why I like this episode as much as I do. It deals with a uh, shuttlecraft crash, which is such a cliche, but it deals with more emotional, personal character story with Tuvok and unrequited love as the guest character has a crush on Tuvok, which he does not reciprocate. And the music does really sell the tragedy of this but what i remember most about how amazing this music is is the scene at the end because we get it's we have these flashbacks through it that are laced throughout the episode with tuvok as a teenager uh who's feeling emotions and he's being tutored by this vulcan master in order to suppress his emotions uh, particularly the emotion of love which is relevant to this episode and um the music through those scenes were really good, but particularly the one at the very end that ends up the episode. It like is I think I talked before about how the producers kind of handcuffed the composers in Star Trek and say, "Oh, we don't want you to make emotional music or music that manipulates people's emotions," which is exactly what music is supposed to do. And this seems like a clear-cut example where they weren't. Um, paying attention and they were letting him get away because the music is like so grand in that final scene and it really it's why it the episode is so emotionally impactful like if there was crap music in there like or mediocre music like this episode would be like nowhere near as good as it is it's the music that sells it and um also the scene where Tuvok, which is a beautiful scene where Tuvok uh, mind melds with Nas, uh, the woman who has a crush on him, and is through the mind meld, she's able to understand what he was going through and understand his position. And the music during that mind meld scene again is it's beautiful. It's just so good. So even though this isn't what I call amazing episode, the music is something I always remembered and I think is is really outstanding. So next, we'll get into my number three, which is Detrell, uh, composer's Dennis McCarthy. But then the thing speaks. And he knows by the sound of her voice that she's not a monster at all, but a child. I don't even know if I need to keep saying that, but I will. Um, so Detrell 
it was another one of my favorite episodes. It's I think it was trying a bit hard to be like duets, and I don't think it's as good as duet, but it's still a very powerful episode that deals with um, Neelix confronting his past and this Oppenheimer figure who, um, you know, created this weapon of mass destruction that was used to kill a lot of his people, including his entire family, and how he's refusing to talk to him. And we get to, again, we get beautiful dream sequences in this episode with Neil confronting, like, his inner demons, because really he's transferring all his anger towards the trouble, but really he's angry at himself for being a deserter. Or he was really a conscientious objector and refusing to fight in the war and he feels guilty over that and so it's transferring that and so we have these dream sequences where those uh, feelings are, are he's confronted with them the music really sells that it sells the the direness of it but really the best musical parts is when Neelix is confronting Detrail and Detrail's talking about what it was like to create this weapon of mass destruction and Neelix like blaming him for the deaths like the music there is so powerful now an argument could be made that the music is trying a little bit too hard to, like trying too hard to be like duet <laughs> but I don't think so like I, I think there's only a slight tinge of that I think for the most part the music is just like beautiful it's just this, what you need for a moment like this the sorrow and it really sells the sorrow of the moment and then of course at the end when we find out that he's trying to bring these people back to life again the music sells the emotional powerfulness of the episode and just how you know powerful that is and of course when neelix actually forgives the trail again they had those beautiful flutes <laughs> And the music where um, that really, really makes it a, such a beautiful moment. So, next we will move over to my number two second favorite episode soundtrack of Voyager. And that is the episode Survival Instinct. What are you doing? Now, Survival Instinct... I think I'm going to have to put this higher on my list after <laughs> after you know analyzing the music. But um, it's not one of my favorite episodes either. It's, maybe it might make my top 15 now. I think before it was like top 20, maybe top 25. Um, but it might be higher this time. It was a very powerful episode. But it's number two on my list because the mu music is beautiful. Throughout the entire episode, it's not just one scene like in Drone. It's like the the whole episode is, especially when it deals with these flashbacks, because it's dealing with these flashbacks of Seven of Nine when she was a Borg, being uh, crash landing on the planet with three other Borg, and them starting to get disconnected from the Borg and, lo and regain their individuality. But Seven of Nine reverts to a childlike state, and she's just terrified of being alone, so she forces the three other Borg to into a, like their own personal little triad of um, of a collective, which they're still stuck with uh, even now, and it's ruined their lives. And the music that we get with the flashbacks is just again we have the beautiful flute music, which Dennis McCarthy is so good at. But it's so, it sells the wonderment, like the childlike, it's like so dynamic, it's so unique, it sells the childlike wonderment of Seven of Nine's perspective, but also like the sadness of, of what happens here and how it affected these three people's lives. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful, beautiful music. And uh, watching this episode again with just the music in mind, I was like, had to put this at number two because the music is just so damn good so good so next we'll get into my number one favorite episode soundtrack of voyager and that is a year of hell composers dennis mccarthy live long and prosper captain Same to you, old friend. Now, 
Now, yeah, I as soon as I went to do top 10 episode soundtracks of Forge, I knew Year of Hell would be my number one. And watching it again only reaffirmed that it definitely is. Uh, not just because Year of Hell is my favorite episode. Uh, that's not the only reason. Part of the reason why it's my favorite episode is because of the music. I will say that. That is another thing that I remembered from the very first time I saw this episode. The music is one of the things that hit me straight away as being particularly epic. And I think this is another case where the producers unchained Dennis McCarthy's great composing hands and to let him do like epic emotionally manipulating stuff and I, I really you can tell that and i think they do do that when there's episodes that they want to make epic and this was definitely like timeless for example but this was definitely one of them um and yeah, the, I heard the music throughout, the anorex, like erasing a whole species from times. They're playing music really emphasized the horror of that. And it, like as the ship is like falling apart all around them and people are dying. It's, it really expresses like this, you know, the sadness, the sorrow, but the, you know, their resolve to even fight through this situation, uh, particularly when part one ends, like when uh, Janeway has to order everyone to abandon ship. Like, the music is just so, like, epic. <laughs> it's just, I don't know what other word to use to describe it, but it really sells the power of the moment. But what I remember this episode most for, and the real reason why it's as high as number one i want to say that it's not just one good scene the music is good throughout both parts but what really struck me as the single best musical piece in all voyager and up there in all of star trek is the moment where they go to attack anorex's ship and janeway put a coalition together of like all these alien species but all the crew is going to go to all those alien ships but Janeway announces that she's staying on board Voyager, even though there's no way that she's going to survive. Voyager is falling apart, and uh, to stay is a death sentence. And so Tuvok goes to try to talk her out of it, and saying Voyager has done nothing; it's just a collection of ship of parts. And and Janeway argues with him saying you're wrong voyager has nurtured us and now it needs one of us and the music that they played during this moment really almost brings me to tears like just the music itself it is so beautiful and it's so powerful and it really underscores like this episode that scene if you take the music out and if you throw in like ordinary david bell music or, or 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 just any music that's just, just that's just ordinary music this scene would be like five times less powerful like the the only reason why i feel the emotion of the moment that i feel the powerful like jane was connection with the ship and tuvok basically saying goodbye to his best friend who's about to die what sells without that music that that scene that moment would not be nearly as powerful that music is just so good it brings me to tears just by itself and as i said throughout the entire two parts the music was amazing so yes this is easily my number one favorite episode soundtrack of star trek voyager so that is it for my top 10 favorite episode soundtracks of Voyager. Thank you so much for watching. As I said, you can check out my channel for the other uh, top 10 episode soundtracks. And also many more videos on Star Trek and many other shows as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.